My name is Nicholas Montez, and you're watching my YouTube channel, Nicholas Montez. Welcome back to another YouTube channel, everybody. I'm so excited to have you all back here together again. And today, guys, we're finally here. The weekend of November 11th. Well, okay, it's November 12th, but it's still a special day because, you know, uh, it's Disney Plus Day, but also it's uh, Stan Lee, um, four years away of passing. Uh, but also, finally, I went to go see Black Panther Wakanda Forever, and I'm going to give you my thoughts. But before I do, I think it's really best to talk about what were my thoughts going into this movie um, before I saw it. Okay, so, obviously, this movie was announced about three years ago, back in 2019, in uh, D23, uh, D23 2019, uh, back when phase, when all of Phase 4 was announced. And it, I'm, I'm just going to say this, from the way my mind is right now, to where it's like very uh, mature, it's not the way it was three years ago. So I didn't feel this, I didn't, I didn't really feel like that three years ago, but if, if you want to be... If you want a mature reason of why I was excited for this movie, here are my thoughts. So, um, going into this movie, uh, I was actually, I was, I was of course excited for it because uh, I loved the first Black Panther. I actually rewatched it yesterday with my sister because uh, she actually hasn't really seen the full thing, doesn't really remember it. So it, it was a good thing that we went to go see it again. And uh, you know, just the world of Wakanda was great. The characters were great, and then of course, you know. Shadwick Boseman as the character of T'Challa in Black Panther is great. He he nailed the role, and honestly, I can't imagine anyone else playing him. And then you know they announced this movie, and uh, we throughout the throughout the months of you know 2019, 2020, we heard some things about like Namor will be the villain of the film, and that they're going to introduce Ironheart in here, and I'm like. Cool. That sounds awesome, and that's straight from the comics. And then introducing Ironheart in, in Ironheart in here also sounds really cool. And then 2020 happened, and it's not that just 2020 happened, but it's also just the tragic death of Chadwick Boseman. And what makes it so tragic is not just because he's a young actor. And he's an MCU actor, and he's a, he's basically a huge hero that meant a lot to people. But we didn't know that he that he was struggling with colon cancer since 2016. Since 2016, when he was introduced in the MCU in Civil War. And so, and I'm pretty sure everyone, um, and their mother remembers where they were when they heard about Chadwick Boseman's passing. I mean, I remember. I remember. Uh, and he, you, you want to know something about this? I watched this movie with my whole family because, and the reason for that is because Shadowy Bozeman died on my mom's birthday. Like, if you remember, if, if y'all see my Instagram, I, I didn't just post my mom's birthday, but I also posted that we, that, that it's been two years since Shadowy Bozeman passed. And so, and so it, it, it was very tragic and that's very that's very like i remember the, the exact day like it was the night of my mom's birthday we were sitting in my living room and then all of a sudden the news comes up and we saw we were watching the news and then we see something about chadwick boseman and he says that he got passed away and i'm like damn i like i was shocked like 
and just look and, and honestly that's the worst like 2020 was a terrible like well it was like a very bad year for a lot of people but that was like the the that was like the cherry on top to make it one of the worst years as you know it closed out movie theaters it had you had to wear masks had to close down theme parks had to, had to stay home all the time just everything it was the cherry on top for a terrible year but and you know as everybody has been grieving and mourning the death of this character uh, of this person uh, and, and the thing is i only watched Shadow bozeman as black panther i never watched him as jackie robinson i never watched him as you know anyone else i just watched him as black panther and you know he he kind of passed away when my youtube channel was kind of becoming this thing where where this youtube channel i watched a lot more movies because of this youtube channel and so now thinking about it maybe that with all the terrible stuff happening in 2020 it actually inspired me to watch more movies and just do a lot more stuff and, and grow my youtube channel um but you know after everything with his passing and everything one thing i really could not stop thinking about was what are they going to do about black panther 2 are they going to continue the story are they going to recast him or are they going to cancel the film or are they just going to do the movie without him and just focus on the side characters and one thing i kind of noticed is like if you recast him that would be terrible to Chadwick Boseman's legacy because Chadwick Boseman was great as T'Challa, and I, and no, I don't think anyone else could play him. Uh, and even canceling the movie, that'd also be disrespectful because I, I because a lot of people think that he would actually want this movie to be made. And then if you just do the movie without him, it's also disrespecting his legacy because how can you do the film without him? And so yeah, there's a lot of decisions in that. But, you know, as as I was thinking about it, as soon as we got those trailers, which, by the way, those trailers, absolutely beautiful. Uh, can't say otherwise. Uh, they're probably some of the best things from Marvel to come out this year, besides announcing the next two Avengers movies. <laughs> but uh, one thing I noticed is y you got to realize something. So one of my favorite, one of the best parts of the original Black Panther, at least for me, were the side characters because you know this movie's focusing on the side characters it's continuing them and it's evolving them and growing them and uh kind of showing you what their what their uh perspective of their grief with t'challa was and you have to realize like one of the best like i hear a lot more people praise the side characters in the first film than actually shadow kid himself everybody likes him but they like his presence. And I hear a lot more people praise T'Challa's Black Panther in Civil War more. Because, and it's true, because he was he was better in that movie. That was his best film of Black, as Black Panther. Because uh, he felt like this unstoppable force that was stopping all these Avengers. And I guess you could say what Ryan Coogler decided to do is he, he didn't just he didn't just come up with a choice to just do the movie and that's it. He didn't just use what he had left, but he also, he's also, he's also using what was best about that, that original film and evolving those characters. And I think the concept of that was just really cool. And then also beyond that, Ryan Coogler. That's another reason why I was excited for this movie. Ryan Coogler, just, if you saw, if you've seen, um, uh, what's the movie with Michael B. Jordan? Fruitvale Station, Creed. Black Panther, all his movies are fantastic, and this was possibly another great film. And then also, you know, just a quick note on the trailers again, you know, the trailers have always been amazing. The one from Comic-Con and the one we got last month, all of them have been absolutely fantastic. And uh, they've all, they actually almost made me cry. They almost made me emotional. Uh, and so, uh, so yeah, that's kind of my thoughts. So, what are my actual thoughts about this film? And I'll talk about that right now, starting now.
Okay, so for me, I loved this movie. I thought that this was a great movie that continued the themes about the original film while at the same time feeling like its own contained story where it doesn't need to mention any of the previous MCU events. It doesn't need to mention any other MCU characters. I mean, obviously they do have like a mention of Hulk and stuff, but this was just a great movie. Uh, I think the way to start out this video, let's just start out by saying there's a lot of there's a lot of similarities between this movie and Spider-Man: No Way Home, and I, I I say that as a positive. I don't mean that as a bad thing because No Way Home is a great film. That's my favorite film of Phase Four, and you know I think I think like they both have a lot of similarities. And first off, the, the way they do the tone with having the serious moments, but also the humor, they both do it very right. The action sequences i think both of these films have great action sequences but no way home has better action come on uh and then just the overall taking up the mantle the message the themes in those two films worked really nicely so let's kind of talk about you know the overall great stuff about this movie first off i mean the emotions the emotions in this movie were so, it, the movie is very emotional there were at least two times where I almost cried. At least in one sequence. We'll get to that in a little bit. But the movie is definitely an emotional one. Uh, and especially that intro. Where you have T'Challa's death. And... I, I, I want to talk about that for a minute. Because I think when they executed this was very well done. Where the movie starts off and Shuri's trying everything she can to recreate the herb. And if you remember in the last Black Panther movie, when Killmonger became king after he went to the ancestral plane to see his dad, he told everyone to burn the heart-shaped herb and have no more kings because he was the only king and he, he was afraid of being replaced. And there's this theme in the movie that it's Killmonger's fault that T'Challa couldn't be, that, that T'Challa's not alive anymore. But that's like saying it's Michael B. Jordan's fault that Chadwick Boseman's not alive anymore. Like, you, you get what I'm saying? And I, I know this is kind of weird talking about this in the good when it's kind of a negative thing. But at the same time, it's like they kind of found an interesting way to do it. But it's like it, it, it's a little bit weird because it's kind of disrespecting the actor in a way. But uh, I... I I thought it was, I thought it was a it was kind of a cool way to, to tell this story. So then we get the so then uh, she finally I think she recreates the herb, but then as soon as she's about to go try it out, Ramonda walks in the room and she's like, "Your brother has joined the ancestors," and then they have the funeral, and and also one thing I noticed is did. Since this is a movie after the blip, did these Wakandan ships learn from the Thanos people? When, because Thanos' ships have these things where they can pull people into their ships. Did they learn from that? I'm pretty sure they did, because I don't remember seeing that in the Black Panther film. So yeah, so the funeral happens. They bring the casket over. The ship takes the casket away. And... They do the Wakanda Forever sign. Uh, and then we get the Marvel intro. And it's dead silent. Now, I have, I will say this about my theater. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a little bit. But I like how the, the, the theater was dead silent. And they used the Chadwick Boseman intro that we saw in about two years ago. When they did it, when they did the Black Panther intro for... His birth for Shadow Boseman's birthday on November 29th. Um, so yeah, I thought that was great. And so then we get into the main story where it takes place a year later. And the, the movie, because if you remember from the last film, T'Challa let Wakanda and the world have Vibranium, where they revealed their secrets. And now we're going to share Vibranium. We're going we're gonna to help people by using vib our Vibranium and helping people across the entire world 
And a lot of people, you know, people say that we haven't seen those ramifications yet. I feel like we kind of have, because if you think about it, uh, where, where was the place they, where was the final battle placed in Avengers Infinity War? Wakanda, because they have the advanced technology to take the stone out of Vision's head. They have the, the, the uh, indestructible, they have the barrier to keep the, the enemies out and they have the massive army. And then we also saw this, we also saw the ramifications of that in Falcon Winter Soldier, where Ayo and the Dora Milaje made Sam Wilson a new um, Vibranium Captain America suit. Falcon Captain America suit. So I guess you could say they're kind of helping their friends out. But even though we haven't really seen how that's affected the world. But what was interesting about this is because there's no Black Panther, there's no protector of Wakanda anymore, people are now starting to get violent and they're starting to try and steal Wakanda and they're taking advantage that there's no Black Panther anymore. And that's actually an interesting storyline. And I, I, I really I really enjoyed that. And plus, and, and then I want to move into this next scene. This next part is there's a lot of performances. There's a lot of performances in this movie that are awesome. Angela Bassett is fantastic in this movie. She is, first off, she's gorgeous, uh, as ever, she, but the, her performance is absolutely fantastic. When she does speeches, like, she was great. She was, she was one of the best parts of the film. I loved her. Um, but then, of course, we lead into this scene, and, uh, I have some thoughts about the, the way they do transitions and stuff. But there's this once, and I, I was thinking that, like, because I heard a lot of people talking about the transition scenes, and I was thinking, like, this was going to be the start of that, but, it, yeah, it, it was kind of weird. But I will say this. The way that this scene was executed in the outreach center, and the soldiers try to steal in, try to steal the vibranium and everything, and then so a door opens, and she's saying the speech that she said in the trailer, she's like, we have lost a protector. They have lost a protector. And now it is our time to strike. And then as soon as she says that, Okoye and the Dora Milaje walk through the black room. And I'm like, oh! I'm like, I had, I had no idea that this scene with Aneka and the Dora Milaje in the dark room would be connected and it would set up a badass moment and they fight the soldiers and I'm like, woo! Yeah! And you know, the action scene is good. Like I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm getting a little emotional here. Uh, it was just so, it was so good. Um, the action scene itself was okay. Cause you know, we've seen and honestly, from the scene, from the way they made it in the trailer, I was expecting this scene to be a lot more epicer with the action sequences it was. And then also, you know, after that, uh, she's kind of like explaining. And for the intruders, she she brings she basically brings all of the intruders out to the courtroom, and uh, I thought that was a great scene. Um, and so now let's just kind of talk about, you know, the characters. Uh, personally, I think the best, one, another one of the great characters of the film was Shuri, which she's kind of like the main character of the film considering she's going to be the new, she is the new Black Panther. And I thought the stuff that they, do, that they dealt with her in the film where she doesn't believe in ancestral plane she doesn't believe in boss she doesn't believe in god that's interesting that she just buries herself into her technology and like that's very interesting and then Amanda comes back after that meeting and she's like have you what's your progress on the heart on recreating the heart-shaped herb like what's your progress on that and she's like the black panthers are a figure of the past like I, rec I was trying to recreate the heart-shaped herb to save my brother. 
I wasn't trying to recreate the Black... I wasn't trying to save the Black Panther because the Black Panther's a mantle. Anyone can be Black Panther. Now, obviously, that's like saying anyone can be Spider-Man. Well, technically, that's, that's a fact because anyone can be Spider-Man. But no one can be... Not anyone can be Batman. Batman is Bruce Wayne. But in this case, Black Panther's a mantle. It's not... Sure, T'Challa carried that role and he is the Black Panther, but just think about all the other Black Panthers. Bashenga, T'Chaka, Azori. They were Black Panthers too. So if you if you take those people, like we're literally getting a Black Panther series because of this film. And so yeah, I thought the, but, but anyway, I, I love the stuff that they did with Shuri in this film, where they really explored just so much stuff. Just so much stuff with her. And she's she's another great perform performer in this film with her performance. And I, I love that. Where she she just she was also just grieving her brother too, and I thought they just did an interesting way of doing her character. But then we get introduced to uh, this scientist on this boat, and when watching the trailers, I was thinking that this boat sequence and the outreach center were the same were the same scenes. Unfortunately, it's not. That there are two different scenes when the Telekins, uh hijack that that ship. And their the outreach center. It's the it's two different scenes. And Lake Bell happens to be that scientist that they, everyone was talking about. And at first, I was like, wait, Lake Bell is someone I know from Secret Life of Pets. I played the fat cat. But then I'm starting to realize, wait, doesn't she play the alternate Ultron Apocalypse version of Black Widow in What If? So I'm like, how is this possible? Like, are they going to do a live action? Like, if they ever bring in the Guardians of the Multiverse in, like, live action like they did with Captain Carter, are they going to, like, have her? And everybody's going to be confused, like, wait, weren't you? And then Shuri might be like, wait, aren't you the scientist? Or, I mean, Namor could be like, aren't you that scient- aren't you the scientist that found my, my vibranium underwater? Like, I'm pretty sure they're not going to do that. They're probably going to bring Scarlett Johansson back to play that character, but who knows? Um, if we don't get that, who, it doesn't matter. Anyways, um, so yeah, we get this scene, and they realize that there is vibranium underwater. Now, um, at first, it's like, uh, how is the vibranium underwater when all vibranium is in Wakanda? I mean, sure, you have Captain America suit, Captain America shield, and all that stuff, and even some vibranium that Claw and Ross sold in Black Panther even Ultron's body or even the spear that was in She-Hulk uh he's like how is the vibranium underwater when all the vibranium is in Wakanda and Shuri made an actual reasonable point later in the movie saying that all most of the planet is made of water so when the meteorite that hit Wakanda years ago it you know kind of it probably landed in the water too and I'm like, that makes sense. I'm like, that, that's, a, that's a reasonable, like, that's a, that's a cool aspect of it. And, and it makes sense when you get into the introduction of Namor and the Talokins, where it, it, it's, it's kind of doing what, what the Chala wanted to do in the original Black Panther, where he doesn't want people to find out about Talokin. He doesn't want people to find out about the Vibranium. Because if they do, then people will get it and use it for evil. But at the same time, Namor is not doing that. But and also, let's talk about Namor and the Talokins. First off, Namor, Techno Huerta. I really liked this character. I thought that this was such a well-explored character. That he's, like, one thing I heard about him is that he can be very jokey with you. But he, he could also threaten to kill you. I just spit. I'm so sorry. But he can also threaten to kill you. And that was actually interesting. And and, and parts of, of that was actually pretty funny. Uh, and, you know, the stuff that he does in this movie. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. It's pretty painful. And uh, I, I, lo I love this character. And I want to see more of it. And plus, the world of Talakun is also great. And that's also another great thing about this movie is that they really do world building with introducing another world of the MCU with Talakun. 
Uh, and I thought the world of Telecon was great. It and yeah, p people can be like, it, if you're thinking that this is gonna be like Atlantic, like these, uh, like Aquaman, it's not. It's really not. Sure, there's whales, and there's and but the the people in it, they're not, they're not really related to Aquaman. And, and yeah, there are some people that do have these masks to like breathe water, but trust me, it's not like that at all. But then also, you know, the backstory in uh, where Namor came from, and that he's the one, that like, he's a first, he's the first mutant on the planet. And I and I realize what a mutant is now because of this, because a mutant is a person that is born with their powers. So I'm guessing Wolverine. That that's what makes Miss Marvel a mutant. That's what makes Wolverine a mutant. And so uh, yeah, I, I loved his origin story. But then I also I just loved the world of Telecom. That was great. But then we also get the but then. Uh, then we get the introduction of Riri Williams um, and Dominic Thorne, Ironheart. I thought she was great. And, you know, she did feel a little bit like that that plot device in Doctor Strange, the Multiverse of Madness with America Chavez, where she was like the source of traveling from uh, universe to universe to universe. And she was the scientist that found, that made this this vibranium detector, but she only did that for us for her class at MIT, not to give to these to these bad military people. And uh, first off, I have to say she was a standout character. Now, obviously, she doesn't lead the film in any way. She's not like a scene stealer, but she she does she does support the movie in a way that I thought was great. Uh, she had a lot of funny lines. She had a lot of great interactions with all the characters, and. I thought they did the jokes with her at the right time. And that's another great thing about the movie is that they are able to do the jokes at the right time. And then, of course, you know, seeing her in an Iron Man suit was cool. Um, I liked seeing her suit at first, and then she was in an Iron Man suit uh, towards the end of the film. I thought that was cool. Um, and then, of course, I think the other, and then I think the other thing you got to talk about here is that action sequence on the Boston Bridge. One of the best sequences of the entire film. Uh, it, it really is something. And especially since it has no music involved. Where you just have a Koye and the Telekans just fighting. And she literally stabs them. And they don't. They, they, they literally just go off like nothing happened to them. There's not even a scratch on them. But the fights. I like the fight with her and Tuma. That was really cool. And I was thinking like this is going to be over quick because... You're basically fighting a blue Steppenwolf, except not as talking about mother, mother. Um, so yeah, I thought that fight on the Boston Bridge was great. No sound, cool action. I love that. Um, but then, uh, you know, seeing Ross again, little interactions with them were great. But actually, I want to talk about the stuff with that happened with Okoye in this film because. I actually liked that they, they actually had con that she actually had consequences for her actions from the first film. If you remember from the first movie, what made her so, and that's kind of what I loved about her character is that she's so noble, that no matter who's on the throne, whether he's a good person like T'Challa or a bad person who wants to burn the world down like Killmonger, she will be loyal to that throne no matter who sits upon it. And Ramonda strips her of her of her general rank, of her Dora Milaje role, as she calls her out on everything that she did. As she's like, "You stood but beside Killmonger, while I had to go to Jabari Land and get protection off of them." And and also, this was like one of the best scenes of the film, where it's like. Lots of stuff has turned bad, and I'm like, this is crazy. What's, like, that, that, that's crazy. Like, that's consequences, that's stakes. That's, that's, wow. That's crazy. And, and, and part of what made this scene a little bit interesting is that they didn't, they didn't really need 
and part of what made I think the first two black these two Black Panther films really great is that they feel like their own contained stories where they don't need to mention so many things about the MCU. Part of what made the Spider-Man films so weird is that they keep mentioning stuff about the MCU. Though that was probably one of the best things about No Way Home is they mentioned the Avengers and stuff like that and all the villains they fought. With this movie, they didn't need to mention any of that. And it, it felt like its own contained story between the war and stuff. And I, I, I kind of like that. I kind of like that. Uh, but then... Uh, the, the plot line with Namor and Shuri where she t where she goes to Telekun and Namor asks her to like join me in destroying the world. I want to destroy the surface because I cannot let people find out about Telekun. I cannot let people find out. And then also you got, you got to, um, then Nakia gets involved in the story and she has like this sort of water suit where she goes in and she saves Nakia, where she saves Shuri and Riri. And, uh, you know, there's this scene where she's saving them and she shoots one of the Atlantean girls. Uh, I mean, uh, one of the Telekin girls. And she wants to, Shuri wants to heal her with her, with a Kamoyo bee. But she's like, we have to go, we have to go. And as soon as you're like doing that, you're like, oh, yeah. So that's how this war is set up. Because... She killed one of her own, and now things are going to have to happen. And then even then, she even th he, she, he even threatens Ramonda as she's like, if you tell people about Talokan, if you tell people that we have Vibranium, I will find Wakanda. I will go to Wakanda, and I will kill you. And yeah, that's awesome. And then we get the big ambush, ambush scene where the Talokans attack, Wakanda is being flooded, and, uh, you know, we get the scene with M'Baku. And also, M'Baku, while I wasn't the biggest fan of what they did with both Okoye and M'Baku, he is, he is funny in this movie. That's what I loved about this movie, is that he was pretty funny. And that he tries to go for the blow to take out uh, um, Namor, but then he just punches him. And from the trailers, I was thinking, like, are they going to kill off M'Baku? I'm like, they can't do that. Come on. They can't kill off M'Baku. But then he just go, he just crashes through a table and then he's like, he, he's just shocked of, of what he just went through. He's not dead. He's, he just, he's just shocked. Um, so I loved that. And so then we get a couple of cool action sequences, but that scene, and honestly, this scene right here where you get to Namor towards the, the, uh, council place Namor throws some water bombs and the the, the 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 council room is flooded and she drowns by saving Riri Williams wife life and this was when I said when I said that this movie is emotional and this movie almost made me cry this was the scene right here where it almost made me cry where Shuri tries to come in and and try to be with her mother and people are just holding her back. M'Baku, Okoye, everybody's just holding her back. And it's like... I mean, even when M'Baku showed up, I'm like, man, this was emotional. This was so emotional. And this almost felt like the Ant May death in Spider-Man No Way Home. And I thought both of these things were executed very well. And so basically... Now Shuri is like, and then Namor also warns them like, you have a week to mourn, mourn your death, get your strength back up, I'm coming back and bringing my full force, my full army, and we're going to war. So, she's like, we're gonna need a Black Panther. So she tries, she goes back in her lab, in the, in the part of the lab that is the place to to make the heart-shaped herb and she does whatever she can and you have a little bit of a soundtrack in here that i thought was pretty cool and it was nice and they also talk about like how can we weaken namor so that way we can win and we basically talk about they basically talk about like what if we made the talon fighter the a uh in they inhibitor the uh heater thing and i'm like that's genius that's really cool so they decided to do that 
and uh, the heart shaped herb works, and uh, she, no, Shuri drinks it, and part of what, and remember, you gotta remember, part of Shuri's thing is that she does not believe in God, she doesn't believe in ancestral, she doesn't believe in uh, Bast, and she, she just took it because she wanted to be strong, but then you're, you're thinking, who could you see? And you're thinking she, you're gonna see Ramonda, um, and instead, she sees Killmonger. And first off, the hairstyle for Killmonger in this movie was pretty cool. And uh, just that whole scene of her kind of inspiring her to go and just take your vengeance and just handle business, that was awesome. But then as soon as she comes up, she's like, it didn't work. She punches a Dora Milaje costume and she's like, she's pretty strong. She's got full force and she's like, Nakia's like, I think you're gonna need a suit. So she goes to over to the Black Panther helmets that she has, that she's created. And then she goes to the Killmonger one and I'm like, and you, you hear the music in the background and it's, it's like, oh, we're gonna get a cool moment here. And then uh, also uh, after the whole flood thing, every, all the Wakandan tribes go to the Jabari land. So Mbako's just talking to them she, she's, she, he sees a ship above them and Black Panther, a girl, a female version of Black Panther falls down out of the ship and it's revealed that Shuri is the new Black Panther and, 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 and her and tr try to have, they try to have, have an arm wrestle. Obviously Shuri wins because she has the heart shaped herb and the Black Panther, the Black Panther is back. And I'm like, Woo! The Black Panther is back. T'Challa, Shuri lives. Let's go. And so we kind of, they kind of talk about like, we need, we need to have a battle plan of how we're going to stop Namor. We're going to battle Namor and his army. And the thing is, much like the first film in Black Panther, M'Baku didn't want to help T'Challa out because he was like the first king to come to Jabari land in a long time, and now he speaks of us. But like now, time has passed where they have become long, long friends. And another thing I love about M'Baku and Shuri's relationship is that a lot has happened to Shuri to not really call her a kid, which I thought was actually reasonable. And also, you see the, the size comparison between M'Baku and Shuri? I thought that was hilarious. Uh, but yeah, so... Um, the fact that she actually, like, forces him to help her... Uh, she forces him to help her. I'm like, that, that was... Damn. That was crazy. So then, they go to war. And you have this battle on this ship, which I thought was really cool. You have a lot of cool fights on here. Oh, and also, you, you, Okoye gets a new suit. Uh, because she was stripped of her Dora Milaje role, she is now the Midnight Angel along with Aneka. So she, her and Aneka are the Midnight Angels. And <clears throat> um, you do get a couple of cool fights. You do get a couple of cool fights with Shuri and the Talokans. Uh, But then, of course, you get that fight with Namor and Shuri uh, on the beach as the ship explodes and a lot of that stuff reminded me of you know the spider-man fight between spider-man and green goblin where they're fighting on the captain america shield that guy just got fallen off the statue of liberty and he's about to kill him and then shuri gets stabbed and she kind of heals up but not really but she's still kind of weakening but yeah still good and so yeah the fight was pretty cool i, I gotta say they took some pretty co good blows um, and then she decided to make the right choice in saying, we will protect your waters, we will protect your borders, we will keep your secrets, but don't, but, but, vengeance has consumed us. And we, we, we're done letting it consume our people. And so then, yeah, uh, the battle ends, they go home, uh, Riri goes back to Boston, though she has to leave the Iron Man, the, the suit that she made here in Wakanda. Though she's gonna make a new suit in Iron Heart. Um, and then, uh, uh, Namor is like, why did we 
why, why did we do this? Well, think about it. Wakanda has no protector right now, so they're gonna need to, when the next when a new threat comes, we're gonna be there to help them. And I thought that was a nice little arc between that and a nice little redemption. And I, I'm excited to see Namor again, Namor again in the future. Oh, also, uh, I know we're past this scene, but the uh, scene where Ramonda and R and Shuri are on the beach and you see those elephants, kind of cool to see another animal, a group of animals in the MCU. Because uh, we've had goose in WandaVision, we had storks in WandaVision, and we had rhinos in the original Black Panther. Now we're getting elephants. Pretty cool. And so then really the last scene is when I believe M'Baku basically becomes king. Uh, they said that they were going to battle, but like they didn't really state that and they just cut from that. So I'm guessing M'Baku is now the new king of Wakanda. I'm just going to go from that. I'm not really going to talk too much about that because it goes by so quick. And then the movie literally ends where Shuri goes to Haiti, where that's where uh, Nakia has been all this time. And she find and the movie literally ends where she finally learns to grieve and burns the thing. And then you hear "Lift Me Up" by Rihanna, and the movie ends. And it was beautiful. And uh, I think the last thing I want to talk about here is that post, that mid credit scene. Boy, 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 do we gotta talk about that? So. It takes place on the beach again, pretty much the same thing, and you and then you see Nakia show up, come up with a boy, and and also th this this scene kind of explains where Nakia was during the events of Infinity War and Endgame, because I was one all this time I was like, well, where is she? Like, where did she go? Like, is she is she doing the War Dog assignment out there? Like, is she really still doing that? And when you piece this together, that her and T'Challa had a son, she wanted to protect him from everything with the throne, and especially with the threat of the universe happening, and she didn't want that for the son. And also, I think this is a nice way to kind of tribute that secret of him having colon cancer, that he didn't want anyone to know to worry about him, He didn't, and it's kind of what he wanted to do, he didn't want anybody to... He didn't want anybody to know how to have a son because people will come for him and people will uh, try and kill him. And he didn't want that for his son too early, so they decided to raise him right, especially with all the bad stuff that's happened with the past kings. And so, uh, and then we also find out, and then also, th this was going to be established later, like, uh, Shuri, I have to tell you something about your brother. And then she's like, did my mother meet him? And he's like, yes. And she's like, it's nice to meet you. And she's like, that's a cool, Toussaint is a cool name. And she, and the boy is like, yours, yours is cool too, I guess. And then she's like, are you good at keeping secrets? And he's like, of course I'm good at keeping secrets. He reveals like, Toussaint is my Haitian name. And then he reveals my name. And then, and then she says, uh, who are you in that language? And then he says, my name is Prince T'Challa, son of King T'Challa. And what a way to keep T'Challa's legacy, what a way to keep Chadwick Boseman's legacy alive by doing that. So perfect, so well done. I can't think of any other way to do that. That, that is another way to do it. Uh, sorry, my one of my family members walked in. Don't, don't, don't forget that. Uh, don't mind that. Uh, but yeah, so the movie ends basically that. Uh, and yeah, so that's pretty much the long good on this one. Now let's talk about the bad. Okay, so I've talked a long time about the good. The bad on this film, the movie, I'm sorry, but the, 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 the this little plot here with Ross and Valentina Allegra Devontaine was not that good. Not that good at all. It, it, it's like every time I cut cut back to that, I'm like, I don't want to know about this. I want to know with with Wakanda and and Talukan. I don't want to know about any of this stuff. And I feel like that this plot line should have been used for another movie. Maybe we could have used the end credit scene where he gets arrested, but then um, Okoye uh, goes back and saves him. Oh, also Okoye saves Ross after he gets arrested. So. Um, I thought this subplot was very, was not that great. 
Also, you know, the, the pacing and the way they, they do transition scenes were not that good. Not that good at all. Uh, I, I thought that that was one of the worst parts of the film. Now, in the first part of the beginning with the uh, the outreach center scene, I loved it. I loved that scene. Uh, it was one of my favorite scenes of the film, though every other scene after that with the transitions I thought was bad. Especially when they crash on the beach and then it transitions back to the ship. I'm like, what? That's such a weird placement. Like, you just left the ship. Like, what? So, yeah. I thought that was kind of weird, but uh, yeah, the transition scenes. And then also... The way they kind of did T'Challa's death, I thought was weird because they're blaming Killmonger. They're blaming Killmonger that it's his fault that T'Challa's dead. That if he didn't destroy the hardship, he would still be alive. But he wouldn't because Chadwick Boseman actually did pass away. So it was kind of. I feel like it was a little bit disrespectful because of that. And then also when they introduced T'Challa's son in here, I thought it was great that they did that. My problem with it is it kind of does ruin Shuri's arc in the movie because he's meant if he's going to be the new Prince of Wakanda, that means he's going to be the next Black Panther and possibly the next King of Wakanda. So, and my family were being like, they're not going to do that. They never said anything about him not being the King of Wakanda, not being the, the new Black Panther. They just said they didn't. They 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 just said they didn't want to have all the pressure of that of, of that they never said anything that like they said they, that after everything that happened they didn't want him to, to struggle with that he's gonna be the new black panther um and then also like a couple days ago i saw like a show that they're making for phase seven called t'challa and storm which i'm thinking like this version of t'challa will meet storm when the x-men is introduced so that kind of gets me thinking like is phase seven like is the next couple phases gonna be uh the mutant saga we'll have to wait and see so that's pretty much all of the bad on this film i really loved this movie uh th there were a couple things i wish we could have done and I, I think the other thing is with certain sad scenes i wish they were a lot more sadder where it's like i felt the tension of it being sad you felt the emotion obviously it does do that very well but I want it to be very sad. Oh, also, I guess the other thing I want to talk about here is my movie theater experience. Bro, when I tell you my, my movie theater experience was terrible. Babies were crying. People kept dropping their, their popcorn buckets. It was terrible. I hated that movie theater experience. Now, to be clear, I am going to be watching the movie next week on... I'm going to be watching the movie next Saturday again with a group of friends, which... Uh, if any of you guys that are going to that theater to watch it with me, uh, and are watching this video right now, watching this part right now, uh, my kindness worked. And to all of you that, uh, that know about that, you, you all know what I mean. Anyway, uh, but, uh, yeah, my movie theater experience was not that good. And I keep saying, I kept saying things like, when you go into Wakanda Forever, everybody shut the hell up. Leave your crying ass babies at home. This movie is the movie of the year, and we need to listen to it. And I'm hoping that next week, there's none of that. I'm hoping that there's none of that, because I can't have that. So yeah, that's pretty much all of the bad on this film. So yeah, I really loved this movie. It has a lot of great emotions, and also, it's also just a great off, great send-off to Phase 4. Which we'll talk about more when I talk about my overall thoughts on Phase 4. All right, so now we're gonna talk about my scores and then we'll move on to other stuff. All right, so that's it for my scores. Now we're gonna talk, <clears throat> now we're gonna talk about my theories on the film. All right, so Obviously, the big theory is this show is going to lead right into the Iron Heart series. That's the big thing about this film is that it's introducing Riri Williams, Dominic Thorne as Riri Williams, Iron Heart. They're setting up that for a Disney Plus series next year, which after seeing this movie and seeing her character, I'm excited to see this character again. Uh, and I'm excited to see her don a great Iron Man suit. 
Um, and then they're also setting up a bunch of, of Wakanda series that focus on Okoye and the Midnight Angels, M'Baku and the Dora Milaje and the Jabari tribe, and then they're setting up a Black Panther series where it basically explores all the past Black Panthers of the past, you know, Bashenga, T'Chaka, Azori, all of them. And then they're also creating a T'Challa versus T'Challa and Storm series that's going to be in Phase 7. Uh, so I'm excited for that, and I'm also excited to see Toussaint, also known as Prince T'Challa II, become the new Black Panther, become the new T'Challa. And also, uh, if if T'Challa died with the heart-shaped herb inside of him, did... Is Toussaint immune? Because I guess that makes sense. I mean, who knows? Because he created the heart... She was trying to recreate the heart-shaped herb to heal him, so maybe he didn't have the heart shaped herb in him when he died. I'm I'm not I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. So that's pretty much all my theories. Now we're gonna uh, talk about some other stuff. So now that this is now that I finally reviewed this movie, it's time to talk about my overall thoughts on Phase Four of the films, not shows, not short films. Uh, just movies. I think that... I, I think last year was kind of a disappointing year for movies. You know, Black Widow was cool. Shang-Chi was kind of disappointing. Eternals was a misfire. No Way Home, awesome. Doctor Strange, pretty good. Thor, kind of disappointing, but still kind of good. And then this one absolutely capulates that. It tops it great well. And I loved it. Now, uh, I have to say... Uh, and I think that it really leads into what Phase 4 was going for and passing the mantles in the multiverse saga in that it passed down its mantles, it passed down the mantles of the past characters, introducing the new heroes of the present, and it's all leading to face the, the, the threats that are going to be in the future. And I, I think that's kind of a cool way to think about it. And so yeah, that's pretty much all, all my, my thoughts on Phase 4, and uh, I'm excited for Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special in the next two weeks, so yeah. That's my overall thoughts on Phase 4. This phase has been complicated, especially with its projects, but it's fine, I guess. But yeah, now we're gonna talk about the next upcoming Marvel movie. All right, so now that Black Panther Wakanda Forever is over and pretty much all the movies of Phase 4 are over, now it's time to talk about the first film of Phase 5, which is Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, and this is definitely a film I'm very excited for. Now, if you know me, I was a huge fan of the original Ant-Man films. You know, Ant-Man 1, really good film, really good heist movie, uh, really good action sequences, very funny, great cast. The second film, pretty good. It's a nice little story. Uh, I like that they bring in Janet Van Dyne and bringing Janet Van Dyne back. Uh, but then this film is like, because we're in the multiverse saga, because the, we're exploring more of the quantum realm, and we're also introducing Kang the Conqueror as the main villain of the film, I'm excited for all of that. And also, you know, Cassie Lang, those eyes, bro. Those eyes. Uh, uh, and also, like, probably... And also, uh, seeing Bill Murray in here, pretty cool. Just seeing the world of the, the quantum realm is going to be exciting, so I cannot wait for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania next year. Alright, so that's pretty much my the whole video for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. All of my social media stuff is in the about section over there. And I'll see you guys in the next video, which is my updated MCU tier list. Bye-bye.